there is no perfect time. Looking at it from that perspective, every moment is perfect. <laughs> Being grateful, never a wrong time for that. Living from your heart, inevitable. You are always constantly living from your heart. If you suppress the thoughts you have, they will continue. They'll just come about in different ways, like if you're angry, you'll resort to something outside of your body to gratify that sense of anger and validate it until you have overcome that feeling to find out how to express it in a more healthy way, like meditating or singing. Um, silencing your thoughts, some people like to say that's meditation. To me, I used to try to do that a lot and it only became anger, exhaustion. I wasn't really helping anyone or myself by doing that. The way that I meditate is practice looking at myself from up here and observe the thoughts that are coming in through sort of a filter of unjudgment and that maybe these thoughts are not who I am. I used to think that speaking my truth was me being selfish and really speaking my truth is the most selfless thing I can do as a person because my thoughts are valid. They are my thoughts. You know, they don't make me who I am, though. That's the thing that I would get confused about when I was younger and I didn't understand what was going on. Um, yeah. Being here, I used to try, my consciousness used to try to avoid that because I was just unhappy with my life. I didn't know that being here was actually what I was meant to do, that I chose to be here in this body. I didn't just happenstance become Maddie, who I am. Um, the longer that I tried to fight being in my body and using different forms of acceptance, uh, or I guess deep, you know, forms of not acceptance, I adapted a lot of different bad habits, uh, drugs, alcohol, whatever you want to say, um, hurting myself, uh, which in turn I just learned from in a more... <laughs> I learned from it since it didn't work out. And that's the way that life is. When you try something that doesn't work or suit your personality, you will just transition from that onto something better that can help you and can help the society that we live in to belong. And yeah, it's really dark a lot of the time when you look at it. You think, oh my gosh, I don't belong here, I don't belong here, I don't belong here. And then the longer you give yourself that thought, the more you'll start to act out in those ways, like trying to avoid your reality. And I've done this through having seizures, I've got epilepsy, been diagnosed with epilepsy, when really mental health, there is no such thing as mental health. We are all healthy in mind if we're alive. And if you're healthy in mind, anything you do to your body it will just show however you're thinking. Like, you see a person who's on the streets and they're doing drugs and you can tell that they are, you know, a drug, they have drug tendencies. Um, I had an experience once in Colorado when I was um, on the phone with somebody and I didn't want to be in Colorado. I told them I want to come home back to where I, you know, I was from, which is where I'm at now. And the person outside of my experience, I drew them in through not wanting to be here in that moment that I was in. I was on the phone and they came up to me and they were riding a bike and they stopped the bike and they said, hey, are you all right? Do you need a cigarette? And in that moment, it was uh, basically like a validation from the universe through that person that like, hey, you're all right, you know? You just need to do what you've been doing uh, with your cigarettes, you know? I've used cigarettes to distract myself from the present moment, so to speak, sometimes. I actually like to use cigarettes as a way to ground myself because the smoke is calming, calming to me like a candle or something to some other people. We just have to realize that projections that happen outside of our existence are messages and symbols from the universe of what is sort of like a verification of what we're going through. 
and keeping all of this inside it doesn't do anyone any good it's really like me wasting my purpose here as myself and when i'm doing that i get depressed i don't want to go you know talk to anyone i so i put myself in solitude and basically not being authentic by not talking and i've done that before where people have been treating me poorly and i've just decided i'm not going to talk for however long it takes till this person understands that I'm not going to waste my words on them unless they understand that I am valuable and that they can't treat me this way. And of course, family members and stuff, that's something you personally need to deal with in your own way. There is nobody who can tell you how to handle your situation or how to deal with the people you've incarnated with and around. That's up to you to decide. And you can do that in many different ways. You can choose to fight back with your siblings. You can choose to argue with your parents. You can choose to do all of these negative things, but when it comes down to it, you'll find the healthiest way in which you'll evolve and it will happen in the right time. People will learn to respect you for who you are and stop trying to control you once you realize that you are in control of yourself and your existence. Thanks. Just be thankful to breathe, be thankful for the air you have, be th thankful for the technology you're using, be thankful for the ability to speak, be thankful that you are not. <laughs> that you're here. <laughs> like, me being who I am, you'll never understand, like, how appreciated you are. <laughs> Emotions are something not to be, excuse me, to embrace. They are something that if you ignore, they'll just come pouring out of you no matter what anyway. So whatever way you decide to do that, it's up to you. Being shameful of who you are is only hurting everyone around you. And in turn, it's going to hurt yourself because if you care about what anyone thinks, you care about yourself. I mean, that sounds sort of contradictive because of course you shouldn't, you know, care about if this person doesn't like this or this, but even not caring is a sense of caring. So really evaluate what it is you decide to have a concern over or not decide. And then really like, if you look at it, understand and think from a perspective of somebody else like okay if my friend or if my cat what was my cat thinking about this situation you know like when i'm arguing with my parents or when i'm arguing with my siblings how is my cat viewing this situation is this rational like do i need to be screaming about things that happened five years ago i don't that's only hindering my growth like and everyone else is around me When we think about our consciousness as a stream of, in the mountains, whatever, wherever you are, may there be a stream. You look at it and it's like, yeah, all right, there's a leaf right here floating down the river. And I can choose to hold on to that leaf until it's out of my sight, or I could start to focus on the next leaf that is coming about through the river. And by doing this, you're shifting your focus from that leaf that you can never catch or hold on to because it is just a thought. And by doing that, letting that thought go, you allow other better thoughts that will help you grow and develop in a more stabilizing, uh, rational manner into your thought realm. And then by doing that, you just keep doing that. And by doing this, you will discover your truth and how you can use your truth to get through the river whenever you may. It doesn't have to be, you know what, actually <laughs> the, river, the river never goes away. It's constantly gonna be here until we are dead out of this physical body. I've had experiences having epilepsy where, having epilepsy, whatever, being uh, basically epilepsy to me is the conscious mind trying to escape the human body. And doing this is it's controllable. You can control your thoughts. You can control how you decide to live in this body because it's your body, you know? That's why people get tattoos, piercings, and dye their hair. It's a form of expression, right? 
So by doing these things, like unhealthily, like cutting yourself or, you know, depleting yourself of hydration, of nurturing like foods and things like that, you are rejecting your sense of being here <clears throat> on this planet. By doing this, you're only metaphorically killing yourself and that is no service to anyone. There's no other way to like be here besides being here. Like there's a quote that says, um, happy, let me read it. <laughs> if you want to be happy, be. And that is like the most basic thing you could ever imagine, you know, but for people like myself, it's hard to grasp that concept. Um, pretty much every single second of every single day and being that way it's like how I deal with it is <clears throat> singing um or drawing writing things down you know anything that I can do that takes my mind off of the sense of be because I know already in myself that no matter what I do I am going to be here and now me having no feeling about that thought it's really just like I'm waiting for the right situations in my head to make that come about, which I feel like is making videos on YouTube. I'm reaching out to other people who have the same stream of consciousness as I, and so we can all evolve and adapt together because we came here to learn. And when you're learning constantly and rejecting it, which is what I've done my entire life, I've understood, all right, I'm learning this, but where is it getting me? And it's like, really, each moment you learn something, you're taking little pieces of the universe and putting them into you and integrating them in a way that you can help society or people as a whole, ourselves, which is really in turn helping you. So don't feel scared to share your knowledge. Don't feel scared or feel like, you know, what your words are saying are not true or are not beneficial to society because the only thing you're doing when you're doing that is closing yourself off from what you your potential is and I can't stress this enough because I've experienced wanting to die many times and really that was just me saying to myself I don't want to be here on earth but I guess since I've had seizures and not died from them when I've literally thought okay I could control if I came back to this body or not really I couldn't because there are people around me who want me here for whatever reason that is and I have to accept it and you have to accept it because Rejecting that thought is really only hurting the universe as a whole for the rest of eternity. So, decide that you want to be oh, here. Oh. Oh, scared me. Um, decide that you want to be here. Decide that you want to be here. Because you already chose that anyway. Alright. <laughs> I may have been very, mm, you know, <laughs> a little bit dark and whatnot, but I've been feeling like since I woke up, I had to speak something and I've been keeping these thoughts in my own head and it's only been making me feel mm, squ squashed, whatever, <laughs> suppressed. I had a headache all day from it, from my thoughts and in order to release them, this is what I've done. So find what creative outlet your personal person can do and is capable of doing and you've known it since you were a young kid and do that silence is power but silence can also be weakness in some ways and don't squash your potential because you feel like your words don't matter because if they matter to you in your own head which is obviously they do or you wouldn't be thinking them then they are important to other people and in whatever way they decide to take that it's up to them um, you can't control where a ball drops after you dropped it it's going to do what it does and that's the same thing with your words whatever you say it's out there and however anyone decides to take it up to them anyway thanks for watching <laughs> um, have a wonderful day don't forget to breathe because breathing is life and life is wonderful <laughs> thank you